Baxter. Didn't even recognize you. All I saw was somebody beating up on a little jock. Six. The following program is rated PG. Parental guidance is recommended for people under 15 years. All I saw was somebody beating up on a little jock. You sure pack a mean punch, Hoss. What was you doing picking on that little fella? Know what that little varmint's up to? There ain't no telling. What you done now? He's stealing ponderosa lumber. Not the foul trees, mind you. The cut lumber. Oh, no, you don't. Come here. Get over here, Professor. It was only taking me enough to build me a little bit of a corral. I don't, I don't reckon you could really blame a man for trying to fix his place up, could you? Wait till your pa hears what Jock's done. We'll see whether he gets the blame or not. I was going to pay him back just as soon as I got me some money. Honest, Hoss. I'll tell you what, Baxter. I'll take full responsibility for, for all this. If that's the way you want it, Hoss. Me, I'm just a hired hand. Baxter. You, you keep this under your head, you hear? Hoss? I sure can't tell you how much I appreciate this. It's all right, Jock. Glad to see you sort of fixing the old place up. Oh, yeah. I, I work at it all the time. Boss, how was it you told me these post holes ought to be dug? Sure, dig pretty. You that tired? Yes, sir, I'll tell you, Jock. Keep this up and you're gonna have a have a real nice place. Eh? I'm doing it all on Sally's account. Yeah, hi, Sally. Oh, the heat bothers her. You know how they are when they get this way. Yeah, well, when's her time? Mm, close as I can reckon, about uh, three weeks come Tuesday. <laughs> oh, here she comes now. <laughs> Ain't she the sweetest thing ever? I can't hardly wait to see that little cold of hers. Yeah, from her looks, he ain't gonna be long coming, neither. You better get that corral fixed. Where's him post? In the barn. With them awful heavy boards, Hoss. Yes, sir. This time next year, I'll be racing Sally, training her little colt. Ought to make myself a regular fortune. 
Yeah, it's a long time till next year, little Jock. What are you going to be doing in the meantime? Oh, odd jobs here and there. You know me, Hoss. One thing I ain't afraid of is work. You know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jock. I know that all right. Of course, I, I probably could borrow against my winnings. Or, or I might could even sell a piece of Sally. If I wanted to do a friend a favor. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, Jock, you, you got any paint? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I got some left over from last year when I was going to touch up the house. Of course, I, I got so busy, I never did get around to it, though. Yeah, well, listen, I, I think you ought to put a little paint over this fresh lumber before Paul gets a close look at it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Hey, this horse's hat. Boss. Morning, Mr. Carwright. Good morning. I can't let him get close to this lumber. Come in, Paul. Hey, so this is where you've been all day. Mr. Hoss, I fixed good dinner. All get cold. Look every place for you. I, I was just here helping old Jock. Yeah, so I see. Poor little feller's got so much to do, I don't reckon he'll ever get it done. Yeah. Well, you're not forgetting I'm racing Raven against Gatling in town today, are you? Oh, no, 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 Joe, I, I ain't forgetting. I was just trying to be neighborly. Yeah, you, you fellas go on in, and I'll, I'll try to get there. Best of luck to you, Joe. Go on, go on, I'll try to get in if I can. Howdy, Miss Henry. You sure look spry today. It's nice of you to say so, Hoss. Jock's taking bets I come in ahead of Sally. You betting? No, no, no. I was just spoofing. Jock, you were going to take six head of cattle into town and pay the taxes. I clean forgot. Jock, you better do that. You bet I better. I won't be going long. Bye. Oh, Jock, if they fetch a good price, will you buy me something? Why, sure, honey. Anything you want. Just the goods to make me a new sunbonnet. <laughs> Sun's beginning to irk me, too. You know what I'll do? I'll buy you one already made up. Oh. Jock, that, that's real sweet of you. Maybe she'll give me three sons someday, like, like you and Adam and little Joe. Well, guess I better rustle my livestock. Maybe I can get to town and watch little Joe win that race. <laughs> Now you can't beat Gatlin. What I need is a bigger hat. <laughs> yeah. Don't beat him yet, Elmery. Not with Raven, you won't. You know, you may need a bigger hat, but not for our money. You'll find my... your cattle down at the livery stable, mister. Thank you, friend. Thank you. I ain't never betting against that Gatlin again until my Sally's back in condition. Your wife? My mare. Mister, mister, do you mind letting me have two dollars? You want a hundred and twenty. Now, what do you want with two dollars? To buy her a sunbonnet. Your mayor? My wife. Lovely, Jock. Thank you. As soon as Sally's back in condition and, and can race again, I'll buy you nothing but silk. Oh, I know you will, Jock, honey. I know you will.
Sure was a pretty bonnet you bought your wife, Jock. Uh-huh. What's the matter with you, anyhow? The price of them cattle wasn't no good, or what? I lost them. Betting on Raven. You lost them? Jock, that was your tax money. What am I gonna do with Sally in her condition and Ellen in hers? That Bernie Jock, you're gonna get a job. You're gonna go to work. That's what you're gonna do. Ain't nobody who'd hire me. Well, we'll just see about that. You think maybe your pa'd give me a job? Well, Jock, there's there's a lot of good places in Virginia City if you get a job, and I'll go in and help you. Hoss, I, I just can't lose my place to the tax collector. That's all I got to give my colt and my kid. Oh, now look at me standing. I ought to be ashamed of myself interfering with your work. You go right ahead. Jock. You're going to go in there and put on your best bib and tucker, and I'm going to go home and clean up, and we're going into town. You hear that? Well, come on. Me. Tell him he made a mistake. John, you can't keep him hiding forever. That's Dave Hart, the tax assessor. He's after my tax money. Jock, I've been looking all over for you. I've been trying to find a job, honest, Mr. Hart. That's true, Dave. Yes. Well, up. that's what's so funny. He's looking for a job. I'm trying to give him one. I don't see what's so fu Give me one. What kind of a job? Well, I've got more than I can handle with the mines and the business establishments in town. I need someone to assess the settlers' homes and ranches and make the collections. Well, uh, what's it pay? Sixty a month for assessing. First two months go to pay his back taxes. But he gets two percent of his collections to pocket for himself. Dave, you got him a system. Now, now, wait, I don't know. Sally, the way she is, and, and Ellen, I ain't sure I want to be away from them. I guess they do need a provider. If you really need me, Mr. Hart, I'll take the job. Well, I expect you to work at this now, Jock. Oh, Dave, you'll be the best dead burn tax collector you ever had. Uh, well, you come with me, and I'll give you a collector's book and a list of people to drop in on. No, she couldn't tell us or not. Who cut your lip for you? I done told you I ran into a broom. Mm. I just wondered who threw it. Oh, and that, uh, that little scratch you got there in your cheek, huh? Cut myself shaving. That's the truth. Look, Haas, if you did have a fight. Paul, it wasn't no f fight. But if you ask me, there's one member of this family looking for a fight right now. I'm sorry. I'm 
Just worrying about you, that's all. Oh, if you must know, I, I was out job hunting for Jock Henry. Mr. Henley, outside. Jock? What's he doing here? Well, ask him to come in and have something to eat. We didn't find a job for him, did you? I sure did, and a good one, too. Good morning, Mr. Henley. Come in. I fix you a nice breakfast. Come in. Thank you, Hopson. Sounds real nice. Well, morning, Jock. Morning, all. Hi, Jock. Jock, when, uh, when you gonna start work? Start? I've been at it since the crack of dawn. Now, hush up. I'm adding. Oh. He's adding? What's he adding? I don't know. Where's he working? What kind of a job did he get? He's Dave Hart's assistant. Tax assessor? Tax collector, too. Mr. Cartwright, appears you owe the Virginia City Treasury $1,647.95. $1,600? Forty-seven ninety-five. Just one minute there, Mr. Tax Assessor, Mr. Henry. Since when do you know anything about tax assessment? Last year, I paid only three hundred and seventy-five dollars. <laughs> the things that Dave Hart must have overlooked. Thanks to Hosser, I get two percent of all I collect, so I don't overlook nothing. You care to uh, pay up now? Pay now? Why, I wouldn't pay now. Oh, Paul, 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 Paul. Mr. Cartwright, I know, I know how you feel about me being lazy and shiftless and all, but thanks to Hoss here, I've changed. And, and that's why I come here first, out of gratitude, Mr. Cartwright, to show you just what I think of you. Gratitude. Thank you, Hopsing. I would like to have a few words with you. Yes, sir. Have at this problem one at a time. You, Ellery, speak up. Why, it's that no good Jock Henry. He had the nerve to assess my livestock at $15,000. That's the most outrageous thing I ever heard in my life. I'm backing my assistant, Jock Henry, all the way. Well, if you feel that way about it, I'll take up my complaint with your assistant personal. Yeah! <laughs> Brooders, huh, Mrs. Hart? Best in Virginia City, Jock, if I do say so. They are, they are. And uh, about how many eggs would you say they're setting on? Ninety-seven, exactly. Ninety. That's just the count I got. Ninety-seven little chicks. Chicks? They're only eggs. Mrs. Hart, they're little living animals. They're just as alive as the other two hundred that are already running around here. Well, uh, whether you're right or wrong, Jock, forget it. Dave always does. You see, the chicks are mine for a special fun. Uh, uh, please. I don't want to hear that, Mrs. Hart. I don't want to hear that my boss is cheating his taxpayers. Why, you insignificant, miserable little wart. <laughs> you dare say a single word about my Dave, and I'll cut you to ribbons. <laughs> Biddy's chasing after Chuck. That's my wife. of yours. Do you know what he's done? My job? Why, he is the most harmless, gentle man in... He is, huh? Well, who gets the egg money in your house, you or him? Well, we haven't any eggs, Mrs. Hart. We haven't any chickens. There's nothing running around our yard and won't be until our baby's born. Horse! 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 Emily, what's this all about? Why, that no good Jock Henry, he's, he's taxing us to death. That's what it's all about. 
You done sick your women folk on them, huh? Best favor I could do your sweet little wife is to put this noose right around your neck. Oh. Now, I, I'm sorry, ladies. I, I know my man is kind of new at his job. If he's offended you... I know what I'm doing. Oh, sure you do. You're hiding right behind your wife's skirts, you little worm. Uh, now, I'll thank you to leave my man alone. Do you know he's taxing us for our unborn chicks? They ain't unborn. They're just unhatched. They're as alive as you are. Well, if they settle this one, at least we'll know which came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> Helen, how can you stand by a man like that? Look at you. Look at the clothes he dresses you in. Has any of you ladies a, a prettier sunbonnet than the one Jock gave me? And next year he promised me a new one. Real silk, too. Bought with our taxes, no doubt. Come on, girls, let's do Ellen a favor and lynch him. I know you won't. Uh, scratch your eyes out. Uh, uh. Oh, now, see what you all went and done? Easy, now, don't get all riled up inside. Think of the baby. Think of the baby. Now, you better have sweet thoughts at a time like this. He's right. For once. Now, we're sorry, Ellen. We'll have Doc Snow come out and see you. I don't want Doc Snow. I don't want anyone. Just you leave us alone. All right, girls. Come on. It's all right, Mrs. Henry. You win. I'll pay his ding-blasted egg tax. Richer than I thought. And, and Jock didn't over taxes, huh? No, I didn't say that. Well, then he did. Just about double. He taxes for the unborn calves, the unhatched chickens. Well, uh, I got us into this. I'll get us out of it. No, we'll work it out together. Yeah, well, Dave Hart back and Jock up all the way. I'll see what chance you have. Well, if anybody can talk to Jock, I can. Um, I don't think so. Not when he's got the bit in his teeth. The trouble with Jock is he's one of the sorry people. Sorry, people. What do you mean, Paul? Well, he's shiftless, loves the life of idleness. You know, women like Ellen, they, 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 they feel sorry for him. They want to help him. And they, they fall in love with him. And they marry them. Then they take on all their burdens. Are you sure right about Ellen being in love with him? Yeah. Main trouble with the sorry people, though, is that uh, somebody throws a little prosperity their way, or a little authority, they, they're worse than ever. They become obnoxious. What are we going to do? Well, one thing you can't do, you can't meet the sorry people head on. If you do, you, you get in deeper than a steer in a bog hole. Now, how do you handle them, Pop? You got to outwit them. Maybe uh, connive a little bit. And I think that's the line we should be following. Let me think, boys. Jock, honey, you forgot your lunch. Me? Eat lunch out of a paper bag? Ain't you forgetting my position just a little? And look at this place. I'm gonna move us into a fancy boarding house in town. And have our baby playing in the street? And, and what about Sally? I'll put her up in the livery stable. And have her baby growing up in a stall? I only plan to hire her a full-time exercise boy. But, Jock, it would cost so much money. Money is no object. Ain't I a legally appointed full-time tax collector? Jock, honey, could you walk to work? I'll need the buggy today. Of course, my dear. Someday we're going to have two buggies. I'll hire myself a hack in town.
Sally. <laughs> something terrible has happened to Papa. We've just got to do something about it. Should you be uh, riding around with, well, you know, oh, you... I, I just had to come, Mr. Cartwright. It's awful important. I've got to talk to you. Oh, uh, are, are you feeling all right? It's dark. Something terrible's happened. What? Well, isn't that an accident? No. It's much worse than that. He's changed. He's become a different kind of man. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. He used to be so sweet and kind. He was always around the house when I needed him. Yeah. Now, I, I don't even know where he is half the time. And not only that, Mr. Cartwright, a lot of people don't seem to like him anymore. Oh, uh, Mrs. Henry, uh, uh, let me get this straight now. Are you suggesting that you'd be just as happy if he didn't have this tax collecting job? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, do you think there's any way you could talk him into giving it up? Well, I, I sure like to help you along those lines. Uh, look, why don't you, uh, why don't you come in the house and we'll uh, have a cup of tea and then we can talk about it. I sure would love a cup of tea, but I, well, I, I don't think I ought to move around too much. Oh, oh, by all means, by all means. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get Hop Singh to get the tea ready, and I'll bring it out in the jiffy. <laughs> Joe. Yeah, Pa? Where's Hoss? Oh, he's outside. I'll get him. No, no, no. no. He might balk at this idea. You know, you know, the way he is, wrapped up in helping Jock and all. Yeah, you're probably right. Now, Haas has a lesson to learn, too. He's let his heart run away with his head. Now, what's your plan? Now, do you remember that sorry little filly that took us in those match races over at Carson City? <laughs> do I? She ran as fast as a streak of lightning. And then not much larger than a pony and skinny. It's where she couldn't carry a man, much less run like the wind under him. Hey, pa? Pa, that's right. And Jock can't resist a horse race. Uh, that horse would make Gatling look like he was standing still. Little Joe, you're pretty good at conniving yourself. Oh, thank you, Pa. Son, I want you to buy that filly. Hmm. Not at the price that farmer asked. What's the difference? Money's going to be taxed away anyway. Go get it. Yes, sir. Paul, I've known you to do a lot of conniving in your life. But I never knew it to take you this long to connive up something real good. Conniving? Well, that's a fine thing to say to your father. Son of a conniver. <clears throat> Joe, where'd you go last night? Where did I go last night? <clears throat> that, Bernie, don't answer me with a question. Answer me with an answer. There's something mighty haywire around here. Anybody home? Why, uh, uh, look who's here. Boss, it's, uh, Mrs. Henry. Why don't you go out and see what she wants, son? Why me, Paul? Well, Hoss, she's your friend. And besides, I haven't finished my breakfast yet. All right. You know, you were almost too anxious. Hey, do you think so? Yeah. Well, anyway, she's more reliable than her husband. She's on time. I I'm sorry, Hoss. I, I don't mean to bother you, but... Well, Sally's having terrible pains, and, and Jock's gone out on his tax collecting, and, and I'm all alone, and, and I just got to have help. Poor little old Sally. Sure, I'll help you, ma'am. You, you just scoot over. Thank you, Hoss. Hey, 
If I know the more I know you, the more I realize what a conniver you are. Well, never mind what kind of conniver I am. Let's get to town. Ellery's going to be waiting. I get the filly out of the barn. Little so. Don't let Sally Philly catch cold. You keep cover with blanket. Got plenty money lie on him today. Don't lully. <laughs> I better get the horses. I get my money. Come on, man. You've been standing there for 15 minutes. Make up your mind. Well, Ellery, I think I'm about ready to make that bet now. How much? Well, I'd say, uh, I'll bet you a thousand dollars. Let's make it two thousand. No, uh, a thousand is good enough for me. All right, then. It's one thousand. It's a bet. Well, Joe, let's talk about the strategy of this thing now. Excuse me. Let's see that, uh... A sorry filly. Not fast enough to race. Too small for a full day's work and not strong enough to pull with the team. What are you talking about? I paid a lot of money for that horse. Oh. See, the fact is, Jock, I, uh, I bought her to race against Gatling. Well, that's the trouble with these sorry fillies. Someone's always taking them to heart. Sweating over them, loving them, and going broke on them. Now, Jock, I paid $500 for that horse, and I intend to pay taxes on the full amount. Well, I wouldn't assessor it 50. When I'm betting 1,000 against Gatling, $50. You're supposed to be a horse expert. <laughs> Any more money you want to bet against Gatling, Miss Cartwright? Now, we're not talking about money. This is a, this is a grudge race. Hop saying, that goes for you, too. I, uh, I sure hate to see horses Paul make a fool of himself. But believe me, Mr. Cartwright, that filly of yours ain't worth its weight in hay. And you're supposed to be an assessor? You bet I am. Bet? Bet what? You haven't got a penny to bet. I get a good salary. Well, Sixty dollars a month. Chicken feed. Uh, Twelve months is seven hundred and twenty dollars. You call that chicken feed? No, I call that a bet. Oh. You're not backing down, are you? <laughs> no, no, wait a minute, Mr. Cartwright. Your, your horse's paw. I can't do this to you. Well, uh, I don't mind doing it to horse's best friend, do I? <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, man gets too uppity. He needs taken down a peg. My sentiments exactly. For your own good, I'll take that bet. Good. Now, ah, let's get down to the starting line. Ah, uh, Miss Henry. Sally ain't likely to have that coat today. Are you sure, Hoss? When I left, she was standing in the corner, pawing a big hole in the ground. She was? Dad, Bernard, I sure would hate for anything to happen to Sally without Jock being here. I think I better ride in town and get him. Hoss, now please wait. You know you'll never find Jock. Now everything's gonna be all right. Don't you worry. Hoss, now he just keeps going from one house to the next. And from one barn to the next? Man, everything's, you... everything's going to be all right. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Ma'am, you go get me some hot water now. Hurry. Hurry, run.
Joe. If we're going to get ourselves a new tax collector, you better win this race. Yeah, I'll just let him run himself out the first two laps and take him on the third. Well, you better take him on the third. Yeah, or you're out $1,720. Oh, no, we're out $1,720. You have half the bet. You got to win this one, Skinny. It's going to be all right. You know what you're gonna be a you're gonna be a brand new mother, the cutest little old coach you ever seen. With a brown face and big brown eyes and a bushy tail just like yours. Gonna look just like you. <laughs> Dad, Bernie, where's that water? Everything's gonna be all right, Sally. I, I'm gonna have to go to the house a minute and see if I can get some water. I'll, I'll be right back now. You, you stay right here, you hear? Be still. Lay right still. I'll be right back. You just be nice and calm like me, you hear? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you was gonna bring that water. I'm having a heck of a race that horse car. Ma'am. It's Henry. Help me, will you, Hoss? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I put the water on, Hoss, but I think you're gonna be needing it for me. Oh, no. Uh, I'm afraid. You can't stop it with words, Hoss. Yes, ma'am. I'll run into town and get Doc Snow. Oh, no. No, there isn't time. Ma'am, don't you worry about nothing. Everything's going to be all right, you hear? You're going to have a nice, big, old, healthy young and big blue eyes and a long, bushy tail. <laughs> Ma'am, I hear Sally calling. I got to run. You stay right where you are and stay calm, just like me, you hear? Everything's going to be all right. Please, Hoss, hurry. Yes, I'm... I sure got a race on my hands now. Dad Burns starts are ganging up on me. Here I am back, Sally, just like I told you. All right, boys, I'll take your best right up to the last time around. Remember, you got three times to go around. That's ten to one. Ten to one. I'll take your best at least. All right, boys, don't rush me. We keep money in family. Like you sing on Bookmaker. Ten to one. You bet Gatling, huh? You bet Gatling. Ten to one. We keep money in family. Very good. What you crying about? Did I tell you I was gonna be back? Well, we ought to be coming around the corner any minute now. At least Gatlin will be coming around the corner. It's not so good for this bookmaker. All right, folks. All right, folks. You saw it for yourself. Gatling two lengths ahead. Odds are now 20 to 1. Who's coming up? 20 to 1. I can say mine. 20 to 1. You take Gatling. You take Gatling. We keep money in family. All right. Now I have to wait your turn now, boy. All right. No, give me back that shit. I'll give it back. I hate to take your money. Yeah, I bet you do. You want to add another half your salary to that bet, Mr. Cartwright? Jock, why don't we make it another full year? That'll make it two years. It's a bet. Everything's gonna be all right, Sally. You think you got problems? Miss Henry's got problems just as bad. And she's real brave about it. Huh? Huh? I gotta go back in the house, Sally. I, I, I'll be right back. You lay right here, you hear? Look out for that hot water. Be still. I'll be right back. I gotta go in the house just a minute. I was gonna be right back, didn't I? Everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> Sally's calling, ma'am. I, I gotta go back out to bar now. Don't you let nothing happen till I get back, you hear? Oh, I'm afraid I don't have much to say about it. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'll be right back. You, you stay right here. Don't you go nowhere, you hear? I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, 
Sonny. What you holding out on me for? Bernie, if you're going to do something, do it. If you don't, Miss Henry's going to beat you to it. She's going to be calling me in a minute. Now, come on here. <laughs> Ellery. What did you say that mayor's name is? Well, her name is Clementine, but I think from the look on your face, we ought to call her old sorry from now on. <laughs> it ain't funny. <laughs> Don't feel so sad. We keep all money in family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, have a wonderful race. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Hey. Yo, Pond, you said half the bed. <laughs> Thanks. Sally, don't you do nothing till I get back to you here. Don't you do nothing. You just lay there. I'll be right back. Stay calm. Tarnation have you been? Don't tell me, I know. You've been out collecting taxes while I'm here delivering your twins. Fine husband you are. Fine father you're gonna make. Father? You mean you mean you boss? Did you bring my twins into the world? Go in there in the house and see for yourself. Ah! Keep it quiet. You may be asleep. got a fine little colt. He's gonna be our pride and joy. And you ought to see the boy. He, he's so handsome, I'm gonna call him Horse. Horse Cartwright Henry. <laughs> oh, Jock, don't, don't carry on, son. I think I'm gonna cry. I think you are, too. That's right, Mr. Cartwright. We got us a problem, haven't we? Yes, we have, Jock. I still owe you a year's salary. No, two years' salary. Two years' salary? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, lost it on a horse race. Oh, it was a fair bet, horse. You see, I, I bet him against his two years' salary, you know, supposing he was going to be working. Now, if he wasn't going to be working, I... Mr. Cartwright, 
Are you suggesting that I quit my job? No, I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just saying that I didn't actually bet your money. I bet against two years' salary, and if you're not working... Oh, I, uh, I, I sure wish I could go along with that, Mr. Cartwright, but Dave Hart, he really needs me down at the tax collecting office. Chuck, I know Dave needs you, but Ellen needs you much more now. I've been talking to her. She's so unhappy with you away in that tax collecting job all the time, and now with Sally and the colt and Ellen and the baby, she needs you... All the more. You really think so? Oh, I know so. I think you're right. And you know something else? When I first took that job, Dave told me it was only temporary. Temporary? Paula oh, Ivan and the job was only temporary. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. You're welcome, John. Joe, take your hat off. That's for the baby. That's for Ellen. Family contribute for a little coat. Good. <laughs> you contribute, Mr. Hoss? I think I done contributed enough to this outfit. I think he has, too. <laughs> I take to Missy Ellen. Clean up house, make big pot mulligan stew. Good. Good boy, Hopsing. 